Welcome. Welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. I ran across an interesting article on Realtor.com talking about when is the best time to sell your home. Now, of course, they're talking nationally. So I'm going to compare it to what we're seeing here in the Phoenix market. Things are kind of stable right now. Interest rates aren't bouncing all over the place. Inventory isn't spiking or dipping. It's just kind of there. Uh, but how do we stack up against that national stat? Because here's what they say. The best time to sell a home is coming up soon, according to analysts by Realtor.com. When? Between April 14th and 20th. Well, why is this? Well, if we scroll down, they say one thing. Above average prices. Homes listed during that week in April tend to be listed for more than houses offered during any time of the year. So let's take a look in our market. Here's the average list price now. And if you look at all these years past, they do tend to peak um, right about here, which is in April, uh, with the exception of this purple line right there. I can't remember what year that is. I'll have to get rid of my little pen here and say that's that's what last year. Last year, we peaked in June, week 22. So as far as list price were going, you started to come back down. So that stat is not that far off. Now, what else are they saying? More buyer demand. Well, let's see what there is here. Um, we're seeing listings under contract have been going up and they're always, the buyer demand always seems to be the strongest for us here in March versus any other time of the year. And uh, then it slowly kind of goes down. But again, this market, it all depends on interest rates. But the interesting thing that's really going on in our market is look at the buyer demand for new construction, new home sales year to date. That's where all the volume is right now. So if you're thinking of listing your home and selling it, understand just how many new homes are being sold right now. You've seen the videos that we're over building and it's terrible. Well, they're selling folks and you should go out and take a look at them and see why they're selling. What do they look like? What kind of things are they offering? This is seasonal trends for closed sales. Cause back here again, it says faster time to sell and less competition. So if I look at the seasonal trends here on sales, uh, let's see, we've got, these are when they closed. So they closed in March. These contracts were written here in February. We had a bunch of them close in May, April, 181,000. Those contracts were written in March. So we do send sell more homes seasonally this time of year. Sales per month, same thing. They tend to go up. These lag about oh, 30 days. You'll see here that um, in March they've peaked, and then in April they start to go down. So that is not exactly following the national trend, but it still looks and shows you that March is a pretty good time to list. Does get a little slower in April. Most of that's driven by snowbirds leaving, but we see another resurgence in listings coming along in May as people want to move before school starts here in the Phoenix area, which starts about third week of July, if you can believe it. New listings by calendar month. March seems to lead the year, year in, year out. January, the close second. This is where we're at this year. We've actually had more in March this year than January. People are always optimistic in January. The holidays are over. They put the home on the market. They go, oh, I was a little too optimistic. So we end up with the highest number of price reductions in February every year. Now, this is something you should pay attention to. This is what's going on in the resale market because it's really going on in the new build market, and that is seller concessions. The builders are giving buyers all kinds of things, including the kitchen sink. They're buying down their rates. They're giving them credits for closing costs. They're giving them good prices on things at the design center. Like it or not, that's going to be your competition. And 45% of our homes right now are offering seller concessions and closing costs to the tune of an average of 9000 $187. So keep that into consideration as you're looking at where you're going to price, uh, that that is your competition. Your competition is new builds and they are winning. They are way up. That wasn't the new build report. They also said the number of price changes drop is what it says here. Fewer price reductions. Well, we can't really glean anything from this report here because this has been a wild ride since rates popped up. So 
we don't even have what I would call average number of price reductions. We're above average in price reductions. And what I'm seeing, which is I've been seeing this for a little over a year now, is that it, it's not that the market price has gone down. It's that the asking price has come down. The expectation. I think I can get this. Let's test it. And if it's not working for you, then you then you mark the price down. So you've got to make sure that you're pricing accordingly in this market. Staging is everything. If you're going to sell, then start packing now. You've already made the decision you're going to sell. Take all personal photographs off the wall. Uh, people feel like they're in, invading your privacy if they go in and see, you know, Uncle Bob and Mary on the wall and your grandkids and stuff and just pack them up you know, take them off there. Try to, less is more. Try to get as much clutter out of the house as you possibly can. Don't worry about filling up your garage because listing, you know, photographers don't take pictures inside the garage. Selling agent or buying your agents rarely go through and say, let's tour the garage. If you open it up and it's full of stuff, okay, good. We expect that. You're getting ready to move. So don't worry about that, but get that stuff out of the house and make it look as close to a new build as you possibly can. Now, a backyard that's full of weeds and it's got things in disrepair, that's a real turnoff. So take care of your take care of your yard. Take care of your pool. If it's green, ooh, that's people don't like that. Same with your front yard, the curb appeal. And you know this because you've been out looking at homes before you decide you want to list. So you already know which ones are catching your attention, which ones aren't. Have a serious conversation with your agent about what kind of photography and media that you want to have. Obviously, you want the best photography out there because that is the first impression that buyers get now. Buyers don't rely on real estate agents to send them listings anymore. They go looking by themselves. And they go to all the sites like Zillow, Realtor.com, or they may be on a list from, uh, from the local MLS that sends them updates as homes come on that fit their criteria. But uh, if the pictures don't look good, they don't have any they don't have any interest in the property. The other thing that's really popular right now that I urge you to consider that that photographers can do, you know, they'll do the 360 photography. That's not as popular as it once was the Matterports where you walk through the home. But what that camera does and you can ask them to include this in your photography package when you're talking to the realtor, you're not paying for it. Your realtor's going to pay for it because you told them to pay for it is a floor map, a sketch of your house, the dimensions. That is really being sought out right now. People want to know, well, where can my couch fit here? How much room do I have for this queen bed? So they want those floor plans included in there. And they're pretty easy to do. Those 360 cameras actually measure the room that they're in. And it's uh, it costs about, I think, an additional $75 to $100 for the agent. Uh, but if you got an agent that walks in with an iPhone and says, here, I'm here to take a picture of your new listing, I would tear up that listing contract right then and there. And I'm serious. That tells you if they're not going to pay for a photographer, are they going to promote your listing? Because there's a lot of different sites where we can buy advertising. We can advertise locally. We can advertise in California. We can advertise in Seattle because that's where the buyers are coming from. We want to run ads in those markets. And if they're not going to spend money on a photographer, you can bet they're not going to shell out a few hundred dollars on advertising of your home in different states. So I hope this helps. It's interesting to look at our statistics for Arizona versus nationally. We're pretty close. Do I think interest rates are going to go down in June? There's only a 50% chance now that that may happen, according to the bond traders. So if you're waiting for a rate drop to spur more buyer traffic, I wouldn't hold your breath on that, and I wouldn't count on that because right now the bond traders aren't counting on it, and they are smarter than I am. I hope that helps. Take care. See you soon.